to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Just to know, Mr. Waterfly. No, my good lord. Thy state is the more gracious, for tis of vice to know him. He hath much land and fertile. Let a beast be lord of beasts, and his crib shall stand at the king's mess. Tis a choke. But as I say, spacious in the possession of dirt. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I would impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. Put your bonnet to his right use, tis for the head. Uh, I thank you, my lordship. It's very hot. No, believe me, tis very cold. The wind is northerly. Uh, it is indifferently cold, my lord, indeed. But yet, methinks, it is very sultry and hot for my complexion. Uh, exceedingly, my lord, it is very sultry, as twere. I cannot tell how. But, my lord, his majesty bade me to signify to you that he had, that he had laid a great wager on your head. Sir, this, this is I beseech match. you, remember. Nay, good, my lord, for my knees, in good faith. Uh, sir, here is the newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman, full of most excellent differences, a very soft society, and great showing. Indeed, to speak freely of him, he is the card or calendar of gentry, for you shall find him in the continent of what part a great gentleman would see. Sir, his definement suffers no perdition in you, though I know to divide him inventorily would dizzy the arithmetic of memory. And yet, but yon neither in respect of his quick sale. But in the verity of extolment, I take him to be a soul of great article, his infusion of such dearth and rareness, as to make true diction of him. His semblable is his mirror, and who else would trace him? His umbrage, nothing more. Your lordship speaks most infallibly of him. The concernancy, sir? Why do we draw, why do we wrap the gentleman in our more raw breath? Uh, sir? It's not possible to understand another tongue. You will do it, sir, really. <sighs> what imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of Laertes? His purse is empty already. All his golden words are spent. Of him, sir. I know you are not ignorant. I wish you did, sir. Yet in faith, if you did, it would not much approve me. Well, sir? Uh, you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that, lest I should compare with him in excellence, but to know a man well were to know himself. I mean, sir, for his weapon, but in the imputation laid upon him by them, in his meat he's unfellowed. What's his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons, but, well. Uh, the king, sir, hath wagered with him six Barbary horses, against the which he has imponed, as I take it, six French rapiers and poniards, with their assigns as girdle, hangers, and so. Three of the carriages, in faith, are very dear to fancy, very responsive to the hilts, most delicate carriages, and of very liberal conceits. What, what call you the carriages? I knew you must be edified by the margin ere you had done. Uh, the carriages, sir, are the hangers. The phrase would be more German to the matter if we could carry cannon by our sides. I would it might be hangers till then. But on, six Barbary horses against six French swords. There are signs and three liberal conceited carriages. That's the French bed against the Danish. Why is this imposed, as you call it? The king, sir, hath laid that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine, and it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. How if I answer no? I mean, my lord, the opposition of your person in trial. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it pleases majesty, tis the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I will win for him, and I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Shall I re-deliver you and so? To this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature will. I commend you my duty, your lordship. Yours, yours. 